It's like a double-edged sword, right? Jobs making you miserable. And you're trying to hang on to some sense of yourself and try not to succumb to your uh, breaking your val- values or any of your morals. You know, so you're trying to hold, you're trying to um, <laughs> play this game, this very dangerous game with your soul, you know. Um, You know, and you could lose all your money and, and, and people you love through this process. Um, but what I found out was I completely lost myself. Not because of the drugs or the mental illness. I became something else because I stayed in that business. Or... And, and, <laughs> That was the toughest part, right? Because now that you're no longer in that business, you're left with this shell of yourself. Like, who the fuck am I? I'm this now? Okay, well, what do I do? Oh, I know exactly what I'm going to do. Because this is the type of person I am. This is what I'm going to do, right? So you continue um, the same path because now you've become this thing. And this thing is miserable and full of hate. And you're gonna um, be drawn to um, your next job uh, that allows you to be that person. And that's what's gonna happen to me, right? Quote unquote, muscle to hire. You know, um, and then the light bulb finally goes off. And just like, um, I can't be this person anymore. It wasn't like, oh, I can't handle this mental illness anymore. Oh, I can't handle being a drug addict anymore. Oh, I can't handle being an alcoholic anymore. It was like, I want to, who the fuck was I when I was 18? <laughs> you know, when I'm looking everything back, like, let's see if we can find that guy again. You know, it's, what was that guy at 18 thinking about? You know, what was the dreams of that 18 year old? What was his aspirations? Of course, besides fucking getting laid, because 18 year olds, that's all they think of was getting laid, right? You know, um, and driving, driving home from out west, dude, it was like, it's impossible. There's no, I've done too much, I've come too far. There is just no way, um, to change what I become, what I became. And it all started from being in a job that I didn't like. <laughs> Actually, like, like is a is a soft word. Like I fucking hated going to work. I fucking hated it. <laughs> I can stress how much I hated it. <laughs> and body always been in my life since I was a kid. But something always threw me off track. Something always threw me off track. Even when I was Loblaws. You know, in the early days. Well, of course, my first... Uh, my first uh, memory of uh, bodybuilding was... Uh, Joe Weider's Bodybuilding Encyclopedia. It was like a package, you know? book and charts and stuff it was like in 1983 you know and I always it was I always went back to it and like I said I could never stick with it right like even when I got really sick when I was off um, probably 2000 it was probably 2013 just a couple years before I was let go um, I figured it out I had figured it out, um, but given that situation at that time, um, I just couldn't pursue it. 
a lot of reasons. Um, but that stuck with me. It stuck with me. You know, I even remember um, saying in one of my past videos, you know, um, I would, I was actually trying to think, when was I, since, you know, like, it couldn't have been all bad since I started uh, with Costco in 96. There must have been some points in my life where I was really happy, you know, there, there must have been some points in there. And a lot of those, the two of those times was when I was actually into bodybuilding, really into bodybuilding. You know, uh, 1998, um, me and my first fight were really uh, into, but like, we actually had a gym in our house. Uh, like, fucking, fucking serious fucking gym. <laughs> you know, I think we spent almost like, 10 grand on it. You know, um, and then back, then again in 2008, um, you know, um, working out made me happy, but just couldn't sustain it. I just couldn't sustain it. I wouldn't make it a priority over everything else. My job always came before that. Always came before that. You know? Came before your happiness, your own happiness. You know, you have to plan for your escape. You have to, if you're in a, in a shitty job, you know, and you want to follow your passion, you have to plan for it. Um, but what you failed to say is, um, it's going to be a hell of a lot more than that. It's going to be, um, you have to take a pretty good look at who you are now, you know, um, <laughs> and that was probably one of my biggest challenges. Um, the job became who I, who I was, like, it, that's what it was, the, the, this character, this turbo, this number one. You know, it, 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 there was no um, Scott outside of work and Scott at work. It was the same guy. You know, living the same story, living the same craziness. There wasn't a separation. There wasn't a home life and a work life. You know, um, that was the that was the hardest part. Was well. This person doesn't know how to do anything else. <laughs> All right, first, uh, uh, let me say, um, if you have a weak stomach or uh, um, um, e this video is not for you. Um, I don't know how much detail I'm going to get into, but... Um, there's a pretty gruesome and graphic uh, uh, story about, I'm about to tell you. Um, <laughs> so let me start off by saying, um, Sam and Scarface um, started as an experiment, okay? Um, two barn cats that I decided to take in for the winter. Um, Not because I was lonely, um, it was because I wanted to work on myself and taking these cats in seemed to cover a, a few areas for me. You know, being responsible for something else, tending to something, you know. Um, I wrote a lot about um, what I was hoping to get out of this. Um, and the intentions were never to um, keep them, keep them, you know, uh, I was gonna release them back in the spring, you know, I was still going to feed them on the porch and I maybe let them visit him, but it was never going to be this, um, um, permanent arrangement. I'm just got her face climbing the wind on the door. <laughs> um, Jesus Christ, how do I fucking tell this video? There's a lot of, a lot of facets to this. Um, You know, one thing, it, uh, one, 
one thing I've definitely shown myself um, through this, especially because I've been working so much. Um, when you don't put your time and priority into the right things, um, stuff happens and you end up like, how the fuck did that happen? You know, um, this happened to me before. Of course, it wasn't with pets, it was in relationships. You know, if I wasn't so fucking busy uh, with my job, um, I would have seen the signs uh, a little clearer. So in part, I blame myself. Um, what a fucking, <laughs> what a fucking nightmare that turned out to be. Um, so... Let me uh, show you, uh, let me tell you a couple of signs um, that I did notice, but <sighs> I, got, I had a sense that um, Scarface was pregnant. <laughs> now it's a girl all of a sudden. Like, I, you see me check, I measured the asshole and checked online, I thought for sure it was a boy. Um, I had a box in the corner. Um, there was some drapes in it, and she kept going into it, fussing around. Like one day, I just got to the point where I fed up. I just took the box out of there, I put it upstairs because it was keeping me awake. Sign number one: she was nesting. She was making a home for her, her litter. The second thing was um, one day, I just noticed she was just really fat. Um, like I second guessed it. But then I dismissed it as, well, Sam got fat this winter too, so. I don't know. Um, so what ended up happening, I guess when I took her nesting away, um, she decided the best place to have her litter was in bed with me while I was sleeping. <laughs> so I'm fully asleep. Um, Scarface is, um, nipping at me. She's done it before, but not quite so aggressive. Um, so I said, Scarface, and I like, kind of shoot her off the bed. As I kind of, like, got up like this, I noticed something wet. And I had, um, was it three or four kittens attached to me? I, I, I've been sleeping on them. And it was a fucking mess of liquid and st the stink. Oh, the stink. Immediately, I shot out of bed. I'm like, what the fuck? You know, I'm standing there, and Scarface runs over and starts licking the kittens. And, uh, the ones that were still uh, alive, I don't know how many were alive still. I just... So I said, okay, just... I don't even know what I was thinking. I'm just um, processing what I think I may have been thinking, or I don't know what I. I gathered up the, my comforter and my sheet, and I kind of put it all together and tied it like this with my hand. And I have a loft, so um, I figured I'd just bring them downstairs and fucking try to figure out what, what to do. Um, so, so, so I have the, the animals in one hand with the comforter and I'm holding on the railing with the other hand and I'm trying to walk down. Well, it doesn't one corner of the sheet, um, come loose and all the animals go crashing down and hit the fucking floor. Oh, fuck. So splat. There's a, there was a lot of things going on, uh, <laughs> emotion-wise. I was angry, I was heartbroken, I was, um... I was mad at myself for allowing, um, this situation to happen, you know, um... <sighs> so 
subconsciously the that I want this to happen. I don't know. I really don't know. Um Like, I don't know. Scarface is fine. She's fine. Um, still climbing my fucking door. Uh, obviously, I think Sam was a father because they were all black. <laughs> Fuck. I might even read them about having letters in the spring. It's like, I knew this was fucking coming. I fucking knew it. It's just... And this happened at 2 in the morning, right before I get up for work. It's just... Fuck, man, I don't even know what the... I don't even, like, this happened, what, I think, Thursday. Was it Thursday or Friday morning? I think it was Thursday morning. And I know I will analyze a lot of shit. Um, I don't mean to. Um, but I just feel it's necessary that I do. You know, um, I don't pay attention to myself. Um, bad things happen. <laughs> so sometimes I uh, kind of fuck my own, my own head up um, over analyzing shit. Um, but I just. Um, feel it's necessary. I don't do it as much as I used to. Um, you can really fuck yourself up, you know. Um, but this situation really took the cake. Um, uh, there were some moments where um, um, the old me definitely took over. Um, So as far as I can tell, um, three of them were three of them were dead. I scooped them up and I put them on the porch. Three of them were dead and one was still moving. And I assessed um, what to do. You know, um, that fall. If it wasn't for the fall, maybe. Um, I would have found a place for her in the barn, but, um, being that I slept on the damn thing and the fall, um, I decided the best thing to do was, um, to end that kid's life. Uh, you know, um, what I did was unnatural. Those, um... Those kittens should have been born in a barn or outside. Not in my home. Um, so part of me feels selfish because um, I took them out of their environment to give me a better, better home and look what happened. <laughs> now there's... Um, a case to be made uh, to not blame myself, but there's a case to make to make to blame myself. Um, but what I do know for sure is um, the point I've been making over the years about you know relationships and and and, and taking care of them and and, and um, when you don't pay attention. Um, Things happen. Um, things you don't want to happen. Uh, it's not like I definitely don't understand what happened. I do. Um, I got too fucking busy and I didn't recognize the signs. So that's on me. That's on me. 
Um, would those kittens have had a better chance of survival in a barn? Probably. Unless a cow rolled on top of them, you know, which has been known to happen. <laughs> it was just a, a gruesome, gruesome um, experience. Um, there was no villain involved. Everyone was innocent. It was just... One of those fucking things. Anyways, I don't even, I don't know what to say. I really don't know what the fuck to say. I keep thinking, um, um, you know, I can't, I, I said it before and I'll say it again. Um, there's nothing worse, um, than seeing an animal suffer. Um, I think as a child too, I explained, you know, there was some, some instances where, um, I witnessed some of that stuff and, but you can't help wondering, um, did I somehow damage myself from the experience, you know, like, <laughs> you know, um, You just don't want to get, like you want it to bother you, um, but you don't want to be dismissive about it, right? Um, like I felt really bad about ending that last one's life, um, but I did feel remorse. So um, I think as long as, um, I did feel that I have nothing to worry about. <laughs> Uh, it was just, it was a fucking, it was like, as much as it surprised me, it didn't surprise me, if that makes sense. 